Hi, in this video I'd like to walk you through some strategies for teaching your students to be skilled readers of informational texts. The goal is to guide students toward self-regulated and purposeful use of reading strategies. In early literacy, of course, the goal is uh, to teach students to read and then they will be able to read to learn. With adolescent literacy, and the majority of you in this class are um, teaching middle school in the future, uh, you want to vary your use of tech genres, uh, vary your use of the modes of text, digital, print, artistic, etc., and consider lessons of what we know about how students learn, what we know about motivation, and what we know about human development. You want to very explicitly explain, model, and provide practice and application for students. And please watch the video examples that I'm providing for you. So, for instance, you want to teach the specific strategy that you're working on, and in this video we'll uh, touch on some very specific strategies, how to use it, why to use it, and when to use it. And you want to very explicitly demonstrate the use of this strategy for students. You want to model how to use, for instance, textual evidence and context as you're reading. Generally speaking, you want to use texts that are within that child's zone of proximate development, above what the child can do easily, independently, but not to the point of frustration. And as you're providing guidance and assistance to students, things that the child needs help with right now, eventually that child will be able to do with mastery independently. For example, when a child makes a claim about a text, for instance, author's purpose or main idea, you want to be able to make sure the child can look for evidence to support those claims. Uh, reading is not just about recounting factual information, it's also higher order thinking skills. And remember the depth of knowledge chart. You want to have children set a purpose as they read. Guide students to dig deeper into the text to set specific purpose for what they're reading, why they're reading, especially the second time. Ideally, you want to give them something to look for when they read a text the second time. Otherwise, it's going to be, okay, why are we reading this this, uh, this time? Find topics as well as texts to read that children will find motivational and engaging. Remember that it is important for students to become self-regulating in their use of reading strategies. Students should understand what happens in a skilled reader's mind. That means you yourself, being a skilled reader, need to guide students to monitor what is happening in their minds as they read. You want them to regulate their use of strategies, and that first starts with, of course, knowledge about what reading strategies are and how to use them, when to use them, why to use them. Strategies will help readers understand and connect to, as well as determine the purpose of what they are reading. The students should make predictions, they should set goals, they should ask questions, and when they get stuck, they should be able to monitor when they're getting stuck and know what to do when they do get stuck to get unstuck. Fix it strategies. This built on the idea of the importance of schema, background knowledge, the way that we uh, connect new knowledge to prior knowledge. And of course, this gets into our background experiences, attitudes, values that we bring to a text. As a teacher, it's very important to keep those in mind, which means knowing about those. Comprehension occurs when the reader activates new knowledge and builds on prior knowledge. And it also occurs when they make connections between prior knowledge and new knowledge. This means, of course, text-to-self connections, so connecting with your reading to your life experiences. Text-to-text, -text, connecting what you're reading to other books or other texts that you've read, or to movies or to music lyrics that you've read. Text-to-life, connecting what you're reading to your real-world events uh, that you know about or that you've experienced. You can guide students to ask certain questions. What do I already know about this? Has anything similar ever happened to me? How would I feel if this happened to me? Can I relate 
to the characters or the historical events in the story to the people in this historical text that I'm reading about in the case of nonfiction. Does this remind me of something? Focus on what is important. So that means your readers need to know how to focus on what's most important. Think about what me, might be on a test, for instance. Think about what the author hints about what is most important. Guide students to ask questions. Determine what's most important. To make inferences as well as predictions. To make visualizations. To synthesize, bring together, tie together various information. And to use fix-up strategies. For instance, when they make connections, they can ask certain questions. Uh, what do you get? Uh, what words don't you understand? What other questions do you have? What do you wonder about as you read? These are all questions you might ask a student of yours when you're having a conference for the student, even just a mini conference for, let's say, two minutes or five minutes. Good user readers will use clues to fill in the gaps in their knowledge and to elaborate on the material that they're reading. They'll get pictures in their mind and they need to pay very close attention to the sensory details that are telling them what's most important in what they're reading. That means you need to model for the readers how to do that. They learn how to synthesize information. These are all questions here that you might ask students in a conference. What's the meaning of what you're reading? What does it all mean? What's the big idea? Are there questions still left unanswered? What are the lessons that you should learn? What do you think about this book? They need to know fix-up strategies. Uh, so when they get stuck, how do they get unstuck? How do you use, how do you use certain correction strategies? So, for instance, they might reread, they might underline, they might use a dictionary, they might do read aloud, and they might get into dialogue with more expert readers, such as the teacher or other fellow students. Students need self-knowledge. They need to know um, something about themselves as readers and as learners. Uh, that gets into self-regulation. They need to know um, about the task at hand. What are they trying to accomplish in this particular task and why are they trying to accomplish it? What's the goal? They need to be able to keep track of what they're reading in a text and whether they're understanding it or not and what they should do when they're not understanding something. So, for instance, you might use text structures um, as a reader. Skilled readers actively search for, for instance, what does this text say about compare and contrast? Is this text arranged chronologically? Is this text showing cause and effect or a problem solution? Or is it mainly descriptive? Before reading, guide students toward analyzing the reading task. What's the purpose for what they're reading? What are their goals that they want to set? Anticipation guides can be very useful in, in uh, building a background knowledge and tapping into background knowledge. And I've given you some examples of teachers at different grade levels using anticipation guides to guide student learning. During reading, they can ask questions about what the author's intent is, challenge what doesn't make sense, and they, look, can, they can look for text structure um, in the text problem solution, sequence, what comes first, what comes next, supporting detail, main idea. After reading, they can extend and elaborate their ideas in writing or in discussion. They can share their thinking about the author's ideas with other students or with the class. You might do Socratic seminars with students. Uh, in a Socratic seminar, uh, you want to guide students uh, through their learning uh, you know, as you ask questions of students. These questions will lead to discussions and students engage in high order reasoning skills. And I give you some clips here. In planning a Socratic seminar, you want to analyze the content of the text to be discussed. Are you going to focus on major concepts, insights for them to gain, vocabulary, text cues? You want to prepare a set of discussion questions that engage in probing, application, and synthesis of information. 
you would have an inner circle where students who are engaging in the discussion, you would want to teach students how to conduct themselves as they speak and listen to one another, and they focus on the content of the text selection or what the what the questions are that you're asking them to explore. In an outer circle, you would have students taking notes. As you conduct the seminar, generally speaking, it lasts 15 to 30 minutes. You would start with a core question that engages students to engage in metacognitive self-regulating type questions and synthesis type questions. Help students to reconstruct the author's meaning and to construct their own meaning of central issues that you're exploring. End the discussion with a summary statement and then for about five to 10 minutes, conduct a debriefing session. You should write before as well as after the seminar a learning logs, double entry journal, quick write strategies. And here are some examples of how to use Socratic seminars that I would like you to explore, please. And as we head down the home stretch of this discussion, we're going to talk some about how to integrate reading instruction with science and math. Very important here is use the text to provide knowledge that allows students to make predictions of how the world works or how mathematic processes work, make connections between reading skills and their tasks involving charts, uh, formulas, text on a page. When we talk about reading in mathematics, of course, the goal is to arrive at the correct answer. And so it's very important to closely read the text, including every word in the text, to make sure that you understand the vocabulary words, uh, these math content vocabulary words, uh, correctly as they're intended to be used. Rereading is a very important strategy uh, to make sure that you're understanding the directions and the words correctly. Precision is so important in both words as well as symbolic meanings that we get into with math and science. Teaching students how to take skillful notes is so important. One approach is structured note taking that you see here. Students can take turns interpreting graphs together and making up little stories and explanations, fiction or nonfiction, for what they're getting out of this graph. Uh, this builds literacy skills as well as skills in interpreting math uh, graphs. Discourse is so important in including a uh, guided discussion, and you can have students complete discussion webs together where uh, they will take uh, about five minutes to complete a discussion web together. They will share and compare the results with a partner, then engage in whole group discussion. This can lead to a focused uh, goal-based discussion as a class about how to interpret graphs or how to interpret scientific and mathematic concepts such as slope. Here you see one example of a discussion web where students might use this discussion web to uh, help them to understand independent and dependent variables in mathematics. Students need to learn how to uh, successfully describe their thinking during mathematic problem solving activities and to, you as a teacher need to make a judgment about whether they're just simply mimicking, mimicking things they've heard other people say or whether they are adequately showing you what their thinking process is. Be sure to be patient, thoughtful, and adaptive to students as they struggle with difficult things. So, as we come to a conclusion of this relatively brief video, uh, remember that the strategies you're using depend on the context, the age and grade level of your students, their developmental readiness, as well as the reading skills and background knowledge of the students. So very carefully, using assessment data, reflect on the strategies that your students need to be successful in the academic subject, science, social studies, English language arts, that you're trying to teach. Take care of yourselves.